e ngā mana, e ngā rea, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Me ngā mihi nui ki a koutou, uh, katika, uh, ki te kaupapa o te rā nei, ai. Uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, kia ora everybody, I've just um, made a brief greeting in um, Te Reo Māori, which is the indigenous language of my home. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to um, acknowledge the tangata whenua, or the original people of this land. Um, uh, sadly, I, I don't know who the original um, American Indian tribe is of this um, New York region, but I would uh, welcome these ancestors and thank you all for um, being here this morning to hear me talk. Um, and the, the, this talk and this exhibition is made possible by um, the Elizabeth Sackler Centre and I'd like to thank the staff and volunteers who've been doing a marvellous job in looking after a group of um, women, uh, I call it the estrogen rising team, so um, thank you very much. I'd like to uh, start this presentation with the image of Mahawika, which is uh, in this particular exhibition, Global Feminisms, and we've been asked to uh, give a context to our work, and I would like to talk about what this work is about in terms of uh, of an architectural sense. Within this exhibition, Mahawika looks like a portrait, but in fact, it's uh, my replication of representing an ancestor. Generally, our, our ancestors would be carved in wood, and you can see some examples of that in the uh, Pacific exhibition, the Pacific area in the Brooklyn Museum. Um, and just while I'm talking about the Pacific collection, a couple of people have been asking me what I'm wearing around my neck. And this is a very contemporary version of a heitiki. <laughs> and uh, downstairs, there's a very, very beautiful heitiki in one of the cabinets. It's a nephrite or ponamu. It's our New Zealand jade. Um, every, every image that's down there is, is of somebody, always of an ancestor. So Mahawika sits in a, on a stool. She's talked about as being part of the underworld. And in my uh, vision of her, I've kind of contemporised what this underworld is. Often she's um, presented in a sort of a natural native setting of New Zealand bush. But my Mahawika sits on a Marcel Brewer chair uh, pleased to say that there's two original Marcel Brewer chairs on show, also in the Brooklyn Museum. Uh, I've always quite often travel around the world and that's uh, such a design icon, you see it in many, many buildings and museums and art galleries around the world. So I wanted to update my version of my Māori goddess by, by presenting her in this century, in 2007, thinking about what does she look like. What does she mean and what does she say? Um, Mahawika is the fire goddess. There's a story of her grandson, Maui, who's a trickster figure, who goes to meet her and ask her for her fingernails because contained within each fingernail on her hands is fire. Um, Maui is always, the trickster figure is always a naughty person. So when Maui went down to, to see Mahawika, he asked her for her fingernail and she holds it up. It's almost like a, a beckoning. It's the first time that she's seen him. She sniffs him out. She can smell him in, in her presence and ask him what he's after. And he asks for a fingernail because they've ran out of fire on earth. She plucks out her fingernail and he, at naughtily, each time he leaves her, he throws them down into a river that he's walking past. Um, 
until the very last fingernail is her, her little fingernail and in a rage. After giving her Maui nine of her fingernails, she plucks out the last one and throws it at him. She throws it into the bush and Maui has to turn into a bird to flee the fire and the heat um, from this rage that she has um, beset upon him. One of the, uh, the, the stories or, or, uh, behind the, this myth of Mahuika and Maui is there's the Mahoi tree. It's the one tree in New Zealand that you can um, rub together and through that you can make sparks and um, create fire. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Fiona Foley who's sitting in the audience now and just in terms of setting up a difference, people can never quite tell the difference between New Zealanders and Australians with their accents and, and, and the place. And they are very, very different spaces. Um, for instance, my, my knowledge is Aboriginal people, um, they create fire by rubbing downwards, whereas with um, Māori, you, 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 we build a canal and kind of make rub very, very fast to create these sparks. So fire is really important because it brings warmth it uh, feeds us and um, we need it for the community. So communities are very, very important. Um, <laughs> very, very important in New Zealand. And Mahuika is just one ancestor um, in a suite of works called Digital Marae. So this is not a portrait, this is a, a, a representative image of a, um, a a form that would be held within a whare nui. And a whare nui is, um, is probably quite akin architecturally to the longhouse, which you see in um, Canadian Indian architecture. And within these kinds of spaces is where we gather to uh, spend time together, to debate, to laugh, to cry, to sing, um, to, to share information and knowledge. This is uh, Hiniwai, who is very young in comparison to Mahawika. Mahawika, um, I'll just take that slide back because I, I did want to say a little something about the model. Uh, this is my father's eldest sister, Rungu, and uh, she passed away last year. So uh, th this work has kind of gained in a different kind of significance um, photographically because it becomes a memento but also um, it, it's a very it, this image particularly means a lot to me because um, it's a familial image and uh, she was the first image in the series of Digital Marae so I, I felt like I had to anchor the series of works with an older person and um, with Hini Wai who comes next um, this is kind of much more futuristic and, and moving into another uh, direction. Hini Wai is uh, the younger sister of Hini Pokohurangi. I don't have the image on my PowerPoint presentation, but it is available on the uh, website, the Global Feminisms website. And again, this is about family ties um, and, and the care between sisters and looking across generations. I suppose uh, my work, in terms of thinking about this notion of feminism, these particular works, their provocation lies in the fact that most marae are carved and made by men. So in using photography and uh, the computer as my carving tool, I am able, as a woman, to navigate my, my way through an area that would usually be done by men. Um, it's quite a provocative thing to do, and I think that within this larger exhibition, the sense of what this, what these, this work, how this work sits, is, is quite different because you're seeing one image um, from a series of five. At present, I'm uh, working on a ser series of male portraits, and I'm also working on a series of takatāpui portraits. Now, takatāpui is a, 
uh, a Maori term which very loosely translates to transgender or friends, very, very close friends of the same sex. It um, has quite a different sense how we might understand it in a Western terminology, but for me, in my marae, in my place, for my community, it's really important that it's inclusive and that all people feel welcome and there's a place for everybody inside the house. So. Basically, what these photographs are, are a series of building blocks, and um, in the year 2020, I've, um, I'm slowly creating the various architectural forms to put these together. Already I'm on my three minutes up. Ah, so fast. Um, and to take this back, I suppose, before I began the series of portraits, I had to make... Um, works that are based on textiles. Uh, these are some dresses, some fabulous sort of 1970s dresses that I wore oh, a few years ago now, which I've filmed and videoed and uh, re recombined into grid-like grid forms, grid-like structures, so that they reference Maori weaving called tukutuku. They act as panels, so what you need to do is imagine these portraits actually sit between each of these panels. So when my Mariah is put together, it's an incredibly um, symbolic and decorated space that is created. Um, it's been a life work, and I've been moving towards that for probably the last six or seven years, and I've given myself a lot of time because I like to move very slowly. Uh, um, and I also feel it's important not to just put lots and lots of work out in the world. For myself, I like that each work has a reason for being. I think there's a lot of stuff in the world. Um, and what I want to put in there, I feel very uh, strong about, that it's, that it's worthy to be seen. I'm just going to quickly, because I've run out of time, show you a work called The Colour of Sin. And... I'm just showing this because my mother was a hairdresser in Hillsborough many, many years ago and I uh, had wanted to make this work for a very long time. I do a lot of installation and I work with film and video and sound um, and this is uh, an opening where three of my girlfriends are sitting inside uh, these crazy retro Ralta hair dryers and they're really beautiful sound domes and I have um, a piece of sound that you can hear what plays inside them um, on the website. So I invite you to uh, look at that at some time and I should round this up because my 15 minutes of fame <laughs> was really fast. I don't know, 15 minutes is not quite enough. I think Warhol meant 15 hours perhaps, something like that. So anyway, thank you very much for uh, listening to my talk.